out. And um, you might need a little patience um, for my technical ability. Okay, so thank you all so much for being here. This is such an amazing, wonderful um, way to be able to you know, get together and talk about drawing and sketching. I'm really inspired that um, you're all here. So thank you. And uh, I'll tell you what we're going to do and then um, we'll start. So we're going to talk about keeping a sketchbook. Um, this won't involve how to make a sketchbook, but I made a short little video on um, how to make a really simple sketchbook at home with just things that you have around the house. Um, what we will do is we're going to talk a little about, about why we would keep a sketchbook, why we even uh, would want to do that, and all the different kinds of sketchbooks that you can keep. I'll show you some examples that I have from my own sketchbooks, from artists that you know, um, famous artists in history sketchbooks. And then, um, you know, and we'll talk about what could be some possible inspirations for you personally in keeping your own sketchbook. And I'm going to ask you to commit to keeping your own sketchbook every day for the next three weeks, so through the end of the month. And then um, you see what happens if you're inspired to keep it up as a practice. Um, maybe you could get some ideas from it. Maybe it's just a nice way to rewind, to unwind and relax, you know, during the day. It's a, it's a nice way to rest your eyes from the screen as well. Um, and, you know, we'll have some sharing of ideas and at, we'll probably take a break at some point. This will last anywhere from one to the very most two hours. I allowed two hours just in case, um, you know, there's extra sharing or questions or comments. And at the end, we're all going to sketch together as a way to sort of start off the class. Okay, so before we start, does anyone have any questions? You can always um, write in the chat or you can unmute yourself. Okay, so let's get started. I guess the first thing is I would pose the question to you, why keep a sketchbook? Like, why does it matter? Does it matter? And what do you think a sketchbook is for? By the way, there's no right answer. <laughs> Just out of curiosity. Like, what are you, what do you think of when keeping a sketchbook? If you've kept one in the past, um, why did you do that? And if you haven't, what are our, your ideas about it? Oh yeah, so someone says to capture a moment. Beautiful, yes, yeah. self-expression, excellent. I've used one when I travel, an alternative to taking pictures. Yeah, beautiful, right? It's a really nice way to just sort of sit and take a place in sketching. Okay, so to experiment, yeah, exper Sketchbooks are a great way to experiment. You don't have to ever show them to anyone to get ideas for larger works. Yes, absolutely. Artists use sketchbooks for, you know, it's like thinking visually before you commit yourself to a larger painting or drawing. I use it almost like a journal. I can include drawing, painting, and writing. Yes. Yes, actually writing in combination with drawing can be really great to work out your ideas, to pause and be in the moment. I bring it with me when I travel with my bike. That is very cool. To seize the moment, yes. All these are amazing, amazing reasons to keep a sketchbook, right? So I think the point is, is to find a way or um, a sketchbook that matters to you and is inspiring to you, right? So it's important to be sort of curious, 
motivated and find a thing, find a way to, um, you know, have it be easy and not putting pressure on yourselves, on ourselves, yourself. So I guess two important factors in keeping a sketchbook are one, finding out why you want to keep the sketchbook, like your personal sort of motivation for doing it or inspiration. And two, that there are no psychological factors inhibiting you. So I know for myself, I have um, loads of sketchbooks that I've started and never finished. So sometimes, um, we can have things like somebody gave us a really beautiful sketchbook, like it's leather bound or, you know, it can even just be a plain bound, you know, hard bound sketchbook. But there's something about the thing that this is a book that um, can be intimidating, right? In the sense of thinking that we can only put nice drawings in here. So we really want to find a way to work that is not inhibiting whatsoever. Also, like if you think, well, somebody might see these and what if, you know, what if they're personal or what if I don't think they're very good or what if I'm experimenting, right? So one thing you can do is never show your sketchbook to anyone if that is something that would inhibit you. Okay, let's see what's in the chat. Um, Monica says, oh, th her sketchbook is a social activity doing together and sharing to give attention. Yeah, so urban sketchers, for example, are groups of people that go out sketching together. Maybe not so much right now, right? But it can be a really nice thing to do together, outside, inside, wherever. Um, it can be a really, really nice shared activity. Um, and Zoe says, Oh, I relate to saving nice sketchbooks until some future when I become a good artist. Yes. <laughs> so this is exactly what we're going to um, combat in these next three weeks. Um, so the first thing could be you know, somebody, Whitney says that she totally relates to what Zoe said. Yeah, I think a lot of us can probably relate. So this is a great point to address this. Um, like right at the beginning. So one thing we can do is we can make a handmade sketchbook from like scrap paper that we find around the house. So I made one with like cardboard from an old um, like cereal box and some scrap paper. And I used a nail to poke holes and tie it with a ribbon, like a piece of string or ribbon that I found around the house. This is like not a high value item that I'm worried about. Um, you know, it's not bound, it's not hard bound, it's not pretty, but it's still highly functional, right? I can totally draw on this. I could also take this ribbon out. I could uh, put in new pages. I could take out, you know, these pages or I could add more. I can do a lot with just this little um, handmade object. And it doesn't have the same weight as, you know, some of these nice sketchbooks. So a friend gave me this absolutely gorgeous sketchbook. I mean, look at, right? So this is a sketchbook I'm going to use for the next three weeks, just to kind of say, you know what? <laughs> I'm just gonna use it anyway, because sketchbooks are meant to be used. One thing to also think about when choosing your sketchbook is where are you going to use it? So for example, I have a dog and I have to walk the dog every day. And sometimes, you know, he gets into these sniffing modes. So there's a lot of sort of standing around. That's actually a really nice time to sit and make quick sketches, right? I walk a lot on the river. So I'm not going to take my big sketchbook out on the river. You know, I'm going to take a small sketchbook, something I can fit in my bag or even my back pocket with just like a pencil stub, right? So one thing to think about, are you going to be sitting at home and sketching? Or are you going to be out? And so that make it easy for yourself to carry your sketchbook if you're going to be out and taking it about. Okay, any comments so far about 
kinds of sketchbooks. Okay, so I just wanted to talk a little bit about a little more in depth about different ways to keep a sketchbook. Um, okay, so Jan says, I always wonder about having multiple sketchbooks going at the same time. Yeah, I would say, for example, I'll keep one in my house that's like a big one that it's not practical to carry outside. And I'll take a little pocket one when I go outside every day. And that's it. Otherwise, I get too distracted, right? Um, sometimes I've had one like one just for figure studies, one for landscape studies. But in the end, they all are like one quarter filled. So I'd say just keep one at maximum two sketchbooks going. It's nice to have a little one, right, when you're out outside. Like if you're waiting, in Italy, we do a lot of waiting. So like at the post office, waiting for the bus, you know, <laughs> waiting. Um, so that can be a really nice time to sketch instead of like getting stressed out. I have um, actually loads of sketchbooks from waiting for the bus, actually. Um, <laughs> I filled multiple sketchbooks just from that activity. I know, waiting at the post office. Yes, exactly. And it's one time there was time an amazing collection of dogs at the post office too. I don't know how, how it happened. Anyway. Yeah, right. So if you think about it, that's a great time to study sketching <laughs> people sitting, dogs sitting, right? That kind of thing. It's an opportunity. So let's see. In the chat, someone says, I think of whether it will be pencil or pen. I'm not okay with liquid media. Then when I wish to make a painting, I'm not lost in colors to use. Yeah, so that's a really good point too. You want to make it easy and simple for yourself, right? So just having a pen or a pencil in your pocket really is, you know, the easiest thing to do. The thing, you, especially if you're out, then you can always go back and add color to your sketches later. When you're looking back through your sketchbook, you can always add color to your sketches. And really, you can do a lot with a pencil, right? You can shade, hatch marking, light lines, thick lines. You can really do a lot with just a simple pencil. Um, Sandra said, I made, I just made one the way you suggested to with watercolor paper. Yes, that's excellent. Yeah, so obviously for painters, having a little watercolor sketchbook is, is great. And it doesn't have to be fancy for it to be functional. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about different kinds of sketchbooks that you can keep, right? Like the intention behind your sketchbook. Sandra says, I'm not a painter, I'm learning. You're a painter. If you're painting, you're a painter. <laughs> We're all learning. Yeah, great. So now I'm just gonna cover a few kinds of sketchbooks to give you some ideas, but obviously this is not all, this is not an exhaustive list, right? There are all different kinds of sketchbooks that you can keep. These are just some of my ideas to get you started thinking about it. So one kind of sketchbook you can keep is a sketchbook specifically for studying something or learning how to draw or paint something. So that could be anything like, I don't really understand how to draw trees correctly, or like, I don't really understand angles and perspective, but I'd really like to, you know, make a drawing of my, you know, rooms in my house, but the lines are all wonky. So I'm gonna like just study those angles in perspective. It could be things like, um, you know, I wanna learn to draw portraits. So I'm gonna use my sketchbook to study individual features. I'm gonna draw eight pages of just eyes, or I'm gonna learn how to make the shapes of heads, or I'm gonna learn about proportions, right? It could be just to specifically study and learn something like a new skill or something you don't feel confident in. Um, I brought 
I have a sketch, one of my sketchbooks here where I need, I really, I was painting a series of portraits and I needed to get better at hands. So I did a whole series of hand drawings. Like first I did some anatomy studies from really old, like 15th century drawings. I copied some anatomy studies. Then I like studied my own hands in sort of these blocky ways. Um, here are some more studies of my own hands where I just like did the simple sketch, then study like the planes, then a little bit longer, more detailed sketch. Um, this is also studying it in a more blocky way. <laughs> um, this is a copy. So then I copied, oops, old masters. This is a copy of a, from a Leonardo drawing. Um, this is another Leonardo copy. Obviously, I'm no Leonardo, but that's okay. <laughs> um, this is another copy, I think, from a Caravaggio painting. Obviously, study Italian. Um, oh, this is another copy from um, a Caravaggio painting. So I wanted to learn this specific skill, so I just spent a lot of time studying and drawing it. And I used my sketchbook for that. Um, also, so it could all be in one place. So then I can go back and look and see when I'm painting, like, how did I do that? So that's one kind of sketchbook that you can keep, you know, and it's great for making copies, studying other drawings, other paintings, when you're learning and trying to teach yourself something new. So another, idea for a way to keep a sketchbook is getting ideas for you know new paintings new drawings new subjects you know maybe you're feeling like i don't really know what i want to draw or paint right now so artists use this all the time right so um maybe you know working out ideas before you commit to making a painting of it um you know, kind of figuring out the composition or just even walking around, sketching things, looking for new ideas. So I'm gonna share my screen with you um, just to show you a few artists who, um, this is what they've done over time. So can everybody see this okay? Stephen oh, Korn is the first one I see. Yeah, so see here, he was just sort of, this is it from, um, I think there are 30 of his sketchbooks online. You can look up all oh. kinds of artist sketchbooks that have been scanned and they're free to look at online. And so you can see he was drawing and then he decided, oh, this is the composition that I like, right, where he drew this little frame. And then these are a series of drawings by Edward Hopper that were studies. They were all studies for his Nighthawk, his very famous Nighthawks painting. Mm. So you see he's like studying all these men sitting at the counter from different views and positions. And then this woman and her hand. And then these are his drawings of like, oh. how to look at the cafe and, you know, how's it going to be on the page? And then this was his drawing before he did the painting, like kind of putting it all together. Okay, now the next kind of sketchbook that I think is really important and doesn't get enough attention is the sketchbook that is just for relaxing, just for fun, just because, just to draw, and it doesn't have to be, you know, drawings of things you observe from life. It can be, you know, doodles from your dreams, imagination, um, you know, when you're sitting on the phone <laughs> and, or when you're in meetings and you're maybe, you know, you need a little break. So I think doodling and drawing can be really, really good, right? Just to relax. 
and all kinds of ideas can come out of it. Right? When you're looking for a new way to work, if you think, I don't know what to draw anymore, you can just start scribbling and drawing, right? You can use markers, crayons, pens, pencil, anything at all. You can just think of shapes that come to mind here She's drawn like little squares, a grid, and then just filled each one in with different shapes, ideas, images, even just marks, right? Like mark making, right? This is probably maybe an old, I don't know, piece from a journal. I'm not sure, right? Um, now you can color in anything like this. So. This is a nice way to give yourself a no pressure sketchbook. Just let yourself be free and doodle and see what happens. So the last kind of journal, or sorry, sketchbook that I think is wonderful is like a daily journal, right? It can combine writing and drawing. It could be anything from your everyday life, right? I've put here um, Federico Fellini's Book of Dreams. All of his films, so many of his films came from dreams, right? things that he dreamt of. And so he wrote down his dreams and he was actually a trained illustrator. So he made drawings of all of his dreams for at least 40 years and they've been published um, twice now actually. So. A sketchbook could also just be a daily journal. You can draw your breakfast. You can draw your pet sleeping. You can, you know, draw your computer <laughs> while you're um, working. Um, a scene in your house, looking out the window. You know, you could draw the view from your window as it changes through the seasons day by day, right? There's no one way to keep a sketchbook. <laughs> okay, so I've been talking a lot now. I just wanted to kind of give some ideas right, for the different ways in which we can keep a sketchbook. I think it's important to set out with an idea in mind and be open to changing it if it doesn't really inspire you. Right. The point is not to do what we think we should be doing, but to actually do something that it's fun and we enjoy and it's really just for us in the end. So I love to hear if anybody has any ideas of what you think you would like to keep a sketchbook about or how you would like to keep a sketchbook in these coming weeks if anybody got any ideas. Hey Kelly, I don't know if this applies entirely. This is Connie. Hi. Hi. But I, I have one like this and I if I'm working on anatomy and I have to sit through very boring meetings at school, I'll glue pictures that I've photocopied oh, in good. one side and then Ooh. I'll draw on the other. And then it looks like I'm taking notes for the meeting that I'm attending, where it's practicing <laughs> art. <laughs> Great, so how do you do it? Show us again. Yeah. So, so I'll get the, I'll do, yeah. I'll cut out photocopies. Yeah, great. And then I'll draw it on the other side. That's really ah. nice. And so it's studying, but also just kind of, taking your mind away a little bit or relaxing it sounds like well yeah and then it makes you know when I have to attend professional development because I'm an elementary art teacher often things don't apply to me so I'm doing my own professional development in a way that's kind of subtle you know so I could look like I'm participating but really doing my own <laughs> that's great yeah. yeah so some people are saying in the chat, that's genius, Connie. <laughs> um, yeah, I love that idea, drawing under the radar. Yes. Um, Linda said, I started keeping a journal when COVID started and it has some yeah. sketches to document. 
some of what I'm living through, sketches of masks, gloves, etc. Of the male truck flowers that my husband gave me. Yeah, that's beautiful. And um, there is something about drawing. When you draw a moment, you really remember it forever. It sort of brings back, you know, the moment, unlike a photograph, say. It just seems to use some other part of your brain. That's wonderful. Next you. There's a huge connection. This is Catherine Hanney, the black box on the left. Right. I like having um, the discipline of one with me all the time so that it stays in the car as opposed to bringing it back and forth. A lot of times there's traffic or you find something that you can um, pull, because I like landscapes, so you can pull over if you're not in a hurry and you're not on the freeway. And you, you, instead of saying, oh, I wish I brought my sketchbook, you have no excuse, your sketchbook is right there. <laughs> and then I like to use larger ones at home. And I pretty much combine all three. It's sometimes a journal, it's sometimes a list of what I need in, from the community or errands. And um, I just recently, worked on a salamander, an arboreal salamander. I had no idea that salamanders could climb trees, but I'm, I'm painting a large um, oak tree oh. at a nature center. And the manager said I'd like an arboreal salamander. And it took me quite a while because it, it's an exacting proportion. And uh, I, I felt my drawing skills were pretty rusty and it was frustrating, but I didn't give up because there's no pressure when this has to be done. And I was very proud of myself yesterday that I could get it on the tree. And there were other people around who said, yes, yes, that's what it is. A five inch yeah. salamander sitting on an oak tree. I can send pictures later. Excellent. That's a great idea, right? Having one just in your car. So obviously you can't sketch while driving, but you can pull <laughs> over in a hurry. That's so wonderful. Oh, thank you. Um, this is Jan. <clears throat> I, um, I, when I was at, physically at work, I would often get busted for do, d major doodling uh, while during meetings and often sketching my um, people around the table. <laughs> and so now that we're Zooming, it's so much easier to sketch people and they don't know you're doing it. Um, so <laughs> This is, Fantastic. Uh, yeah. this is from a recent meeting. <laughs> that is so great. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And I also just, I, I started just keeping um, a, basically a journal of work notes. So it's everything is like, I think I'm on my third during the pandemic. So I don't keep notes in different places, which is, uh, been really helpful to me. So I know it's in there somewhere and sometimes I put little stickies, but you know, I also do like doodling around my work notes and stuff like that. So it's just, um, yeah, cool. it's always, always an opportunity. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. Well, and it could make it um, a little more inspiring. What might be banal otherwise? Yes. Beautiful. Okay. Oh, you guys are, have so many inspiring ideas. Um, let's see. In the chat, Donna says, um, oh, Anita says, I'm about to become a grandmother. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. So I think I will be keeping a record of our new family. Yes. New family member. Yes. Sketching a baby is wonderful. And they sleep a lot. Um, that's invaluable, right, for, for the future. Wonderful. Um, uh, Susan says, I started drawing a couple of years ago using watercolor postcards. Excellent. They make a sketchbook of sorts. And I remember the places I've been a lot more from drawing rather than a photo. Mm -hmm. Yes, I love that. The postcard format is beautiful, too. Um, Donna says, I have a simple sketch made on the roof of a building in Italy where we hung our laundry. That sketch takes me back to the moment so beautifully. It is also one of the only sketches from the past that remain uh, since my house fire took most of them. 
Wow. Yeah. Amazing to still have that one sketch, right? It becomes very valuable. That's great. Okay. Um, I, I wanted to, um, sorry, I just wanted to join in and I was late 15 minutes, so I missed yeah. the first part, but I wanted to say that um, I am a very beginner, totally beginner. Yeah. And I liked very much um, your idea of doodling uh, as yeah. uh, sketching. And I think that in my case, um, I will start by, I have, so I've missed the whole part about papers or pen, pencils, whatever, because I've not been uh, uh, painting or drawing. Um, but I like very much the idea of taking pressure um, away from the idea of sketching. Um, yes. Because by nature, I'm a perfectionist. And I think that's one of yes. the reasons why I never really um, uh, behind my grammar school, I never really uh, even tried to to draw because I have yeah. the feeling that if I have a nice paper or nice colors, then I need to learn technique, I need to do things perfect so that they look almost like in a book. So I think I will just start by a simple um, notebook. Yes. And just starting doodling or taking it with me, like I think it was Susan said, by putting it in the car or ha always having it with me. And just by taking all the pressure uh, away from the idea that it has to look like uh, somehow decent or or more artist-like, just to yes to start. Well, that's beautiful. That's wonderful. And really. Actually, doodling is more important than you think. Um, it teaches you a lot about uh, mark making, like different ways to make marks, uh, use pressure. It also, you find your own sort of natural way of drawing that way when there is no pressure and you're not thinking this should look a certain way. Uh, it's fun, it's relaxing, and I think it gives confidence in drawing. Right. Then when you feel like it or maybe you'll be inspired, you can start to draw other things around you if you want to. Or you can make there are artists and that is their profession, right, is their professional doodlers. But they're amazing artists. Right. So there is no uh, doodling is not a, a lesser art form than any other art form. Right, it's actually, it can be really beautiful. And, you know, we didn't really talk about materials yet. So you didn't miss anything, so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, it will be recorded. You can go back and watch if you want to. Okay, um, does anyone else want to share or say anything? This is Zoe. Um, I. I just building on what Sarah just said, I, I'm a lawyer. And so I'm like a word person in my day-to-day -day life. And so I like the idea of doing something that isn't word-based and isn't so intellectual and that I don't have to be good at and that it's it's fine if I sketch for the rest of my life and I'm always objectively a bad sketcher and nobody ever sees it and that that's fine, that that's sort of my goal to have something that is fun and that I don't have to get be good at. Yeah, great. Yes, you don't have to be good at it, but you should enjoy it, right? And maybe, yeah, be open to like, you know, where it naturally leads you. I mean, this is really, I think this is really sort of the heart of the conversation about starting a sketchbook is have it be a place, if at all possible, where, um, we don't have any uh, negative voices or we limit right, the negativity, right? There's a lot of, um, they said, there's a lot of, uh, I guess, judgments around what is art, what is good art, what is um, how you're supposed to draw, what things should look like, what's good, what's ugly what's bad right but um 
I think real art doesn't, artists don't actually really have those judgments, right? Art is actually the one place where everything can be expressed. So that would be my hope in starting this sort of journey of the sketchbook is it's a place where anything goes. You don't have to show it to anyone unless you want to, it's nice to share, right? And it's just for you. And it can be, you can sketch on anything. You can draw on napkins, on cereal boxes, on those Amazon packages that come, like really you can draw on anything. Um, it's nice to have an actual sketchbook to keep it all in one place. If you're like me, like loose papers everywhere just are impossible to keep. It's also nice to have it in a, some kind of bound form because you can see how things change over time, right? Even doodling, you see like um, certain threads in common and how they change over time. Okay, so I'm gonna say, why don't we just take a break for five minutes and when we come back, we'll talk a little bit about materials and We'll sketch together for a few minutes, maybe five, 10, 15 minutes. And I'll tell you what we'll do in the next meetings after this. Okay, so does anybody want to say anything, comments, questions? Okay, so how about we'll come back in five minutes. We're, people are back now can i ask something yes of course uh, i i just feel very very judging when i when i do some some things because yes. i i i just judge myself you know looking yes. at what i'm doing oh, okay. and that's the most uh, hard part for me to go overcome you know to to pass so I don't yes. know if you have some suggestions on that. Yes, so think, let's just talk for one second. Why, what do you think you're judging? Do you think it's because you're comparing to someone else or you think that your drawings should look a certain way? Like, what do you think the it's judgment- It's just because I have- because I have something in mind or that I want to really fix on the on the paper but then for example a person doing something you know just an idea or an idea also for my for my job but I cannot you know have to draw like a person doing or keeping you know an action and uh, and the person doesn't come out well you know it's something that I can hardly understand myself you know, so it's yeah. Well, it's here, but it's not there. You know, it's very yes. strange. So that's no. This is this is great, Francesca. It's absolutely great because I think we're always in this position in the sense of there is always a gap, right? There is a place like where we want to be and where we are, right? And in a way. The only way to think about it is we have to change our minds to think like, uh, well, the only way for me to be able to get from where I am to where I want to be is I have to be willing to do it until I get better. So I have to be willing to be bad at something until I am, no longer bad at it but the thing is there's always something that will we won't be good enough at so i remember when i was in art school my teachers told me always that i was very bad at drawing and all my peers were so much better and that i needed to work a lot harder than everyone else to get as good as they were <laughs> so, <laughs> right i hated the, I hated this and, um, and it made me feel like I wanted to give up. But I learned 
many things from that, um, you know, lots of critiques in art school that were not easy. And one thing that I learned was um, my way of drawing or expressing is maybe different than my peers at school. Like I was really strong with color and shape but I was very bad with line so I could choose yeah. did I want to work more with lines to get better or did I want to stay with you know the things that I'm naturally stronger at so yeah there's no right answer but I also learned that I had to practice to get better but for the things that were important to me, not what mattered to my art professor. <laughs> so like when I want to learn to draw hands, theirs are really, really difficult. And being Italian, you see all the amazing paintings around you and it looks easy, <laughs> right? But these people, they were trained from very, very young age, right? They learned at a very young age. So all we can do is go one step at a time and practice. So if you want to learn like how to draw a figure moving, that's challenging. But you can start with simple things like learn to draw the gesture, right? The simple overall movement of the body. And don't worry about, you know, all the details. And then learn the proportions, how to make, you know, the legs in proportion to the torso, in proportion to the head, after learning how to capture the movement. So one step yeah. at a time. But we also have to yes. accept where we are. And it's okay to be bad at something because you can always get better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. And I mean, I think every artist, um, Every artist deals with this. It's really important to find a way to want to, you know, want to learn how to do something new because that's what keeps you interested and engaged. But if it feels like it makes you not want to do it, then we should find something that inspires us instead. Yeah. So. Okay. It's, in, it's also important to do things okay. that you just like that are fun, like doodling or, you know, coloring with crayons, right? There are coloring books for adults for a reason, right? <laughs> like, those are fun. Uh, I love colors, actually. Yeah, yeah. So you could just color. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes you can practice the figure, right? But... Yeah. Also, do I, I want to practice enjoy. figure. Yeah, I want to practice figure. I will. Yes. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. You're welcome. Okay. So I wanted to just I picked out a few um, sketchbooks from different times that I found in my studio, and I just wanted to share some with you to show you how like incoherent they are, or scribbles together with more finished drawings, you know, unfinished ideas, all kinds of things are in there. So I just picked out a few that I wanted to take a minute and show you. Um, I'm going to switch my camera. I have an overhead camera that I can show you. So here's a, a sketchbook that I made myself. It's very worn, you can see. It's an accordion sketchbook. So it's like one big long page. And mm. I put two kinds of paper in it. I put some watercolor paper and some plain drawing paper. And you can draw on both sides. So here I did some blind contour drawings in pencil. Um, you know, not looking at the page and just drawing. I don't know. Here I don't know what I was doing, just practicing some different marks in pencil. Right mm -hmm. here, some a little watercolor added. Um, here's like a 
pen sketch with just a little bit of color. This is done with a, this is a nice technique for people who like to draw in pen and also add color. This is a pen that's not waterproof. So if I go over it with a brush, it sort of dissolves the ink and you can make it sort of ink washy and it will blend together with the colors. It's unfinished. Mm -hmm. um, just Which more. pen is that, Kelly? Um, yeah, they, uh, let's see. Oh, there's one that's really cheap. It's a Stabilo point oh, yeah. eight eight. They make yes, them in like 500 colors. Yeah, they're wonderful. And, um, and they're not waterproof. So if you go over them with water, they will sort of dissolve. Okay. Um, yeah, just a lot of random marks and testing. Um, here's the other side. So on a page Ooh. with a sketch, I don't know, some <laughs> random watercolor stuff too. Um, some architectural details. Um, trying to figure out perspective, right? In a colonnade, I think. Um, playing around with statues and shapes, right? So this is just sort of a random oh. sort of sketches, right? These are just why I added a little touch of color. Um, here's like a, this is great. This is an old sketchbook that I remember I got this sketchbook and I went to meet a friend who was sketching tango dances. Thing. Have you ever tried to sketch tango dancing? This is what my uh, version looked like. <laughs> it was just <laughs> pages Stop. and pages of scribbles, basically. <laughs> um, it was really fun trying to sketch dancers. I had never done that before. So this is what happened. Um, here I had some ink, so I just used that. I thought maybe it would be easier, but um, and then these are just, a lot of these are sort of pen. I think this whole sketchbook is, I just dedicated myself to drawing in pen, like starting somewhere and not stopping so that I could just commit. Here are some studies for an idea for a painting and pencil. So, you can, this is my street. So one way that I gained confidence in sketching was I took a, I only took a pen. So I couldn't erase anything. I just had to sit and draw. So I just pick a place to start and then keep going. Um, oh yeah, this is like a blind drawing where I'm not looking at my paper, I'm just drawing. I think this is like some markers. So this is um, at a meeting. <laughs> um, just in pencil, another meeting, just drawing people instead of really paying attention probably, right? This was an idea that I didn't finish. This I remember, this is a one line pen drawing. So I just started somewhere and I made the whole drawing without ever lifting my pen. Um, right. Oh, this is um, a paper maker. I was in his workshop and he was telling me about paper. So I was sketching him and taking notes while he was talking. Um, this is another one I picked just because it has some more, this is a lot of just scribbles and yeah, some more pen drawing. I think at a certain point I decided to start doing some watercolor little sketches in here. Oh, that's nice. So I dedicated, thank you, this book to that. So one thing is what I did is when I painted like across the page, I would leave the next page blank so it didn't go through. 
So that's one thing to keep in mind. So I started using the sketchbook. Oh, that I love that. So this is not, oh, um, you know, super high quality paper. It's not meant for watercolor, but that's okay. I painted on it anyway. Lots of, you know, just scribbles like somebody sleeping <laughs> um, at a model session, live models. So more pen. Yeah, um, I was traveling, I think, and this is, I didn't have my paints, mm -hmm. just a sketchbook and my watercolors. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, these are just going around different places and, you know, sitting and sketching. Right. This was like, oh, this isn't going to work out, so I'll abandon it, which is fine. <laughs> same with same with this one. Oh, this is not going to work. OK. Um, yeah. So this is um, here in Rome. More Rome. Right, so a pencil sketch that I thought, oh, that's not very interesting. I'll just abandon it and move on. So I think that's it, right? So some are more, some sketchbooks are more elaborate and some are filled with scribbles, <laughs> right? <laughs> and that's exactly as it should be. <laughs> <laughs> There's no one way to keep a sketchbook. Okay, so I guess a few words about materials. The first thing is pick a sketchbook, whether you make it or you buy it, just pick something that you will actually use. You don't want it to be precious. You want to feel comfortable like just making marks in it. Okay. And the other thing is, don't worry too much about materials. I would say start with, if you don't know where to start, start with a soft pencil. So a soft pencil is in the Bs, like B, 2B, 4B, 6B. And those pencils are nice because you can turn them on their side and shade with them, right? Or you can draw with a fine point. They have a nice range. Also, you can use a marker, any kind of marker, like a Sharpie marker, a fancy art store marker, like any marker you can find. Um, or just even a ballpoint pen. I actually have the, I, I don't know where, it, the pens that have like four colors, the big pen it has red, green, black, and blue. I love drawing with that. Just pick something simple and don't make it complicated, right? But you also have to enjoy drawing with it. If you wanna add color, add color. You can always go back and add color, right? Um, but if you don't like actually drawing with a pen or pencil, but you love painting and color, just paint and color. You know, get some crayons or borrow your children's crayons, right? Just use a tool that you enjoy, right? And it brings you joy to use it and just have fun. Kelly, oh. what was yes. the name of the pen that you used that wasn't waterproof? Yeah, it's called the Stabilo 0.88. I don't know if you can see it here. Oh yeah. And they come in literally hundreds of colors, like any color you can think of. Um, and they cost like one euro, one dollar, if that, yeah. Okay, thank uh, you. Sure, mm -hmm. Francesca said, what is a Marco, a penarello? Like, um, you know, something like this. The felt, yeah. And uh, Sharpie markers. Um, someone asked, did you add the watercolor at the time or later? Question about waiting to dry and not being able to work on multiple drawings at a time. Yeah, so normally I would just add the watercolor while I'm there, if I'm sitting somewhere sketching. Um, 
working if I have time. If I don't have time, I can do it later. One thing you can do is if you're out sketching, you can get like a big clip, like a uh. bulldog clip. And what I do is I can like clip my page like this, or you can even put two. So you can carry your sketchbook while it, or I just carry it like this while it's wet, waiting for it to dry. But this paper isn't great, so it usually dries in five minutes unless it's winter time. Okay, so questions, comments. Okay, so do you use yeah. do you use this kind of uh, <clears throat> watercolor pencils? Yeah, I don't, but watercolor pencils are great. Do you use them? Well, I try. Uh, I was uh, given as gift, so I I tried them a couple of times, and I I, I like them. Although uh, I'm painting with uh, Giovanni Ragone, do you know him? You you don't? Yes, yeah. you do. I do. Uh, and he hates pencils at this time, so he's uh, disapproving my use of paint. <laughs> yes, you should keep a secret sketchbook. <laughs> yes, I <will>. yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, watercolor pencils are great because then you can also you can draw and then dilute on top or you can at the end go and draw on top. It's it can be very beautiful. The marks when the when the painting is dry, you can go back and it can be really really nice actually. Yeah. So Sandra, keep un taccuino segreto per te. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> Va bene. <laughs> okay. Can, Can I? I yeah. Oh. Oh. Sorry. I just wanted to say Sorry. something to Francesca and getting the courage to draw. I did a class with Kelly and one of the exercises was to draw with our left hands. Well, well you're the hand that is not dominant. Yeah. And it was incredible because when I draw with my right hand, my mind says, oh, well, yeah, that line doesn't look like that. Oh, you idiot. Did you, how, you're always drawing that eye in the same way. What's wrong exactly. with you? Yes. When I drew with my left hand, it, my mind was like, oh, that hand doesn't know what it's doing anyway. <laughs> so, you know, like he doesn't know. What it, oh, look at that. Look at that. So amazing. Look what he did. It was, so try that. It is so cool. And, <laughs> the stuff that came out of my non-dominant hand, the left hand, was so wonderful. It like broke through so many barriers because my mind wasn't scolding it. So it was very, try that. Okay. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you. Uh -huh. Excellent. Great. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Anyone else? I think Karen, was Karen going? Yeah, I, I just wanted to ask you if you um, ever use photographs, like take a picture and then take it back after you've started something. <clears throat> yeah, so um, normally I do not, but I do do a lot of sketches. So I do pencil sketches and then watercolors, maybe um, to study the color. And then, yes, yeah, sometimes if it's uh, like a long project, maybe it's not a painting for me, it's a commission, I'll take photographs. Um, but the reason why is because when you draw something, your mind sort of automatically selects what's important, mm -hmm. right? Um, and a photograph mm -hmm. obviously doesn't do that. It just gives right. you facts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. But something else that photographs do is they tend to flatten the shadows. So, um, but you can see a lot more subtlety in the shadow. So if you use photographs and you can make sketches first from the actual place or thing, I think they work well in combination. Okay. Yeah, if possible. Also, because I think that how we frame things um, in a photograph is probably different than in drawing. Um, I'm struggling a lot with that very thing because I have, can you hear me? 
Yes. Summer. Um, I have photos of places that I took that I love and I'm not painting outside, no. And my paintings from those photos are dreadful. I just don't know what's wrong with them, but hearing you talk really helped because it just doesn't yeah. work. I can't well, make up could... what I want in there. I'm trying to be like the photo. Yeah, you could try and make some drawings of them first. Yeah. I'll try that, thanks. Yeah, I know it's a tough time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, anyone else? Okay, so I'd say, why don't we get started and christen our sketchbooks? If you have a sketchbook ready that you know you want to use, why don't we just go ahead and put it to use? So, and if you don't have a sketchbook ready, that's fine. Find a piece of paper, scrap paper, the back of a anything, and let's take a few minutes and just draw together. So for anybody who wants to draw from life, like from something you can observe, I'd say if you're right-handed, why don't we look at our left hand and draw it? And if you're somebody who wants to doodle and doesn't want to draw from life, this is your chance to just get out a pen or a pencil and doodle. So anybody who wants to take the challenge and draw their hand, like I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna draw my left hand. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a blind contour drawing. So who knows what that is that can explain it to the group. I think I know what it is. Oh, okay. Let's hear it. I, I don't know whether I'm being I'm being heard or not because I don't know how to use it. Yes, we can. Oh, hear. okay, okay. As I recall, you never look at the paper or whatever you're drawing on. You just study what the uh, the thing is that you're drawing. You keep your eyes fixed on that and your pen or your pencil or your brush, whatever it is, and, the, and you just Stop it. doing what, what you Stop see. It. What? That's okay, go ahead. Oh, no, no, I, did, I didn't know whether, what, I don't know what's going on. I don't know how to use this thing. <laughs> anyway. That's okay. No. But, but that's what it, blind drawing is, right? When you just don't ever look at the paper. You, it's, the results are very interesting. They're fun. And you can't okay. take it really seriously, but it's a wonderful exercise, I think. Okay, the great. So you explained it perfectly. So yeah. what we're going to do and why we're doing this is because there's no pressure to make a beautiful drawing because you don't even know what you're drawing because <laughs> you cannot look at your paper while you're drawing. So if you're left-handed, look at your right hand. If you're right-handed, look at your left hand. Now, put your hand in a position so that it's like coming towards your vision or your face and make an interesting pose, you know, something like this right not nothing no flat hand so what we'll do is with your eye pick a point to start and follow the outline or the contour of your hand very very slowly and as you move your eye around your hand you're just going to move your hand your or hand with the pen or pencil on your paper, right? So take your time and go slow. And we're gonna do this together. And anybody who wants to share afterwards can. Okay, any questions before we start? Okay, everybody. And if you don't wanna do this, you can just draw whatever you want, okay? Okay, ready? <laughs> And let's start. Good. 
go slowly. Don't look at your paper. Okay. Did everyone do it? <laughs> okay, what happened here? I'll show you mine just so. Oh, that's know. good. Yeah, anybody who wants Susan, look at Susan. That's me. No, wait, this is just this was sort of the when you can't even see what tell what it is, but it's my left hand. <sighs> Curved, my fingers curved. Okay. And Marsha, nice look nice. at this amazing. Kim, Janice, yes. I can't Sasha. see this. Look, this is mine. Oh, see? cool. Hey, cool. Wow. <gasps> what was it? I'm I'm loving my creepy little thumb. My thumb <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> It's like like a, like a little shrunken head or something. <laughs> yeah, it looks like a shell silver, like from a shell silver scene book. That's so great, Mimi. I can't see Mimi. Put yours closer. Yeah. Well, I have to put it the other side. But... Great. Oh, nice. Francesca, beautiful. Oh my gosh. Okay, so what was it like drawing without looking? Horrible. Torture. <laughs> Frustrating. <laughs> it's good though. I used to do this with a te another teacher of mine. She made us do it a lot. And it's your drawings, you when you're looking then are better after you do a bunch of this. They're just better. Okay. So why do you think that is? Why do you think they're better? Because you're training yourself to really look. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so even if your drawing doesn't come out, you know, like a photograph, you're really observing things closely. Yeah, mm -hmm. beautiful. Thanks, Susan. Okay, anyone else? And it's true that if you go slowly, it's much better. Because at the end, I rushed and, and but uh, when you go slowly, it's really cool. Really cool. Oh, uh, yeah. So taking your time and going slowly helps. Okay. Somebody, somebody else said, not fun. 
<laughs> loud, mm -hmm. out loud. Somebody said it's hard to go slow. Okay. Um, let's see. If someone else um, I had to stop. It's like torture not looking at the page and I keep laughing trying not to. Yeah. <laughs> so one good thing about this exercise is you notice how much time you spend not looking at the thing that you're drawing, right? So if you want to draw from life, try and see how, if you can spend more time looking at the thing that you're drawing than at your drawing. Okay, <laughs> great. Okay, so I don't want to take too much more time. I was, um, you guys have been great. I wanted to, if anybody wants to make a donation, you're welcome to. I'll put the link here at the bottom to PayPal. But this class is totally free. I really want to um, have us all be inspired to sketch again. I know it's been an extremely difficult year. Um, hey, Kelly. Yeah. Is there another way of donating? Because I don't have PayPal and I'd like to uh, donate something as well. Sure. Yeah. Um, let me think about it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. PayPal Great. is always the easiest, but yeah, sure. Okay. Okay. Um, what I'll do is I'll send out an email and anybody who wants to donate can. Um, I'll put a link here to um, for anybody who wants to do that. Also, Great. we Great. have for anyone who uses Facebook, we have a Facebook group where um, it's called sketching our world sketches from home and um, I'll send it oh. to you as well and it's a really nice place if you want if you want to share your sketches or get ideas from other people um, you know ask questions see what other people are doing it can be really inspiring to work together and to steal ideas from other people <laughs> <laughs> Can you put the link up again? Yeah, so uh, here's the, let's see, the link to PayPal is here. And I can also, um, I'll find the Facebook group okay. and put the link as well. Um, can stay on for just a second if you want that. So does anybody have any questions, comments, mostly, does everyone feel like they have a place to start? Like, does everyone feel like they're ready to keep a sketchbook for at least three weeks? Yes, for yeah. sure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm hoping so, yeah, that I could stick with it for longer. Yeah, so this is just the start and it's for fun. Um, somebody asked a really good question, which is what is your advice to make this habit? Like to not forget about the sketchbook. This is a great question. So what I'd say is something that you can do, like I did this when I was in school, in art school, every morning I would draw my breakfast before I went mm. to school. <laughs> it's like, um, <laughs> because otherwise I would be too tired to sketch at the end of the day. Um, you know, another thing is like, I think a way to make it a habit is to have either a time or a place that you do it every day. So, you know, if you have to wait for the bus every day or take the bus every day, do it on the bus. If you, you know, have, the morning is always good because the day hasn't bombarded us yet, you know, it can literally be five minutes, right? It doesn't have to be some elaborate process, right? That is torture, like not looking at your drawing. <laughs> May I ask something? Just yeah, of course. what do you eat for breakfast that's interesting enough to keep with it? Oh. I mean, I, I don't, I eat the same breakfast basically out of laziness almost every day. I couldn't keep up the habit that way. Yeah, you don't have to draw your breakfast. You can draw while eating breakfast. So oh, okay, okay. You could draw your pet who's laying there uh, while eating breakfast, right? You can, drawing bananas is actually extremely challenging. You can oh. try drawing bananas. 
you can doodle right while at yeah, breakfast okay okay i yeah. was kind of kidding but i think just you every day doing that same your, breakfast. you can make your to-do list and color it <laughs> right you can. donna just said she sketches at cafes that's part of the horror of lockdown is you can't go sit in a cafe or being zona rancho rosa you can't go sit someplace and you know keep buying water and, and sketch all afternoon yes in italy we cannot go to a cafe and sketch but maybe in america you can hopefully. no it was in the past i'm sorry i just have a great memory of it <laughs> yeah well, exactly i'm sure it will come back um somebody marta asked you sketch a lot of architecture do you ever use a straight edge to get building edges straight no i do not but um but you definitely can i'm you know like the edge of a book or you know, another book or a card or something you have to bag. um i don't so um you can accept wonky drawings too um but if you like straight edges and it's challenging to make straight edges definitely you can just you know use the edge of something straight and it will you guys it. in the states know about these art toolkits no i don't they, know oh they are really really good there's two sizes and i think she just came out with a third third size but this holds it comes with these if you want it to here's one of my paint sets this is like a oh. a, a business card holder and it has these uh, little pans that you put your own colors into and that you can get different size pans, but they're magnetic. So you can interchange them or Ooh. and take them out and keep it clean. So you and you can get an enormous amount of paint in this and you and the thing will hold two of these. I have a little spray bottle. Um, I have a little thing to inject my water brush with water. And then it holds pencils and stuff, and it holds a sketchbook. This is the la the larger of the two standards, but as I said, I think there's an even larger. And this is this is a um, Moleskine uh, yeah. sketchbook that fits in there. But it's really handy because you can just put all this stuff together. And as I said, I have a ti uh, the tiny one too, and this fits in a big bag, but the tiny one fits in a really small bag. And when you take it out at a restaurant, they don't roll their eyes and think, oh my God, you're gonna make a big fat mess all over the place. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of surreptitiously do it. It's, they're <laughs> really wonderful. If you just Google art toolkit, she's in Seattle. Great. Thank you. And she's, she's an artist who is really interesting and, and does all kinds of interesting sketch projects, but these, kits are great and they're really Excellent. made out of durable stuff <laughs> great thank you that's excellent so someone else said could set up a still life right and you can set up a still life and you can draw it multiple times right from all different angles and rearrange the objects um whitney says that i've discovered my house is actually pretty interesting if i look closely very cool. Um, Susan said, a friend of mine is a painter, Hal Mayforth. Check him out. He has a room full of sketchbooks because he starts every single day with an hour of sketching in mm. the same kind of black sketchbook that he has been using since he was a teenager. That's amazing. Right? You'll need a bigger That's house for sketchbook. <laughs> Okay, yeah, thank you. And everybody says thank you, Susan, for that great resource. Okay. All the wonderful ideas. It's been a great time. Excellent. Good. So, Patty, are you inspired to start your sketchbook? I am. Thanks for all the great, great tips and ideas. Great. You're, I'm really excited to see what happens. So, we'll meet, we're going to meet on. Um, uh, three Sundays in a row, so next Sunday and the one after. And each week I'll give you a little sketchbook challenge, uh -huh. but like something new to think about or try or do. 
And also, it's nice to come together and what we'll do is we'll share with each other, you know, what worked, what didn't work, what inspired us and what got us motivated or demotivated, right? And we can steal and use strategies and, you know, adjust what we were doing the first week for the second week and so on. Kelly, okay, so, I, excuse yes. me, one thing. I think you should make us come back in three months and show our sketchbook. My problem is I start off with a, you know, full of enthusiasm. And then I have yeah. all these half filled sketchbooks because I just yes. eat her out. So if we were forced to show our work over a period of three months because we had an appointment that we had to you know, prove we'd done it. We should. Well, let's get through the first three weeks. See if you can <laughs> Why don't you take one of those half-filled sketchbooks I, and finish it in the next three weeks? I'll give it a try. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Well, thank you all so much. I'm really looking thank forward. You, thank, thank you, Kelly. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you. Thanks, Kelly. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. This was great.